On December 20, 2021, an eruption began on Hunga Tonga Hunga Hepe, a submarine volcano in the Tongan archipelago in the southern Pacific Ocean. The eruption reached a very large and powerful climax nearly four weeks later, on January 15, 2022. Hunga Tonga Hunga Hepe is 65 kilometers north of Tongatapu, the country's main island, and is part of the highly active Tonga Kermatic Islands Volcanic Arc, a subduction zone extending from New Zealand north northeast to Fiji. In the Volcanic Explosivity Index scale, the eruption was rated at least of a 5. The eruption caused tsunamis in Tonga, Fiji, American Samoa, Vanuatu, and along the Pacific Rim including damaging tsunamis in New Zealand, Japan, the United States, the Russian Far East, Chile, and Peru. At least four people were killed, some were injured, and some remain possibly missing in Tonga from tsunami waves up to 20 m high. Two people drowned in Peru when 2 m waves struck the coast. It was the largest volcanic eruption since the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo and the most powerful eruption since the 1883 eruption of Krakatoa. NASA determined that the eruption was hundreds of times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The eruption was the largest explosion recorded in the atmosphere by modern instrumentation, far larger than any 20th century volcanic event or nuclear bomb test. It is thought that in recent centuries, only the Krakatoa eruption of 1883 rivaled the atmospheric disturbance produced. Volcanic Activity December 2021 After staying relatively inactive since 2014, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hepe volcano erupted on December 20, 2021, sending particulates into the stratosphere. A large plume of ash was visible from Nukwalafa the capital city of Tonga, about 70 kilometers from the volcano. The Volcanic Ash Advisory Center in Wellington, New Zealand, issued an advisory notice to airlines. This initial eruption ended at 2 o'clock on December 21, 2021. 22-23 December 2021, 8 to 14 kilometer high plumes containing sulfur dioxide drifted to the north northeast and spread over the Niuatapitapu, Hepe, and Vavau Island groups. Sertsian explosions, steam plumes, and steam bursts were recorded by a Tonga Navy crew on December 23, 2021, during which time the first ground based images of the eruption were created. During 24 27 December 2021, Steam and gas emissions reached altitudes of 10.3 12.2 km. Ash plumes reached heights of only 3 km, depositing ash only adjacent to the volcano. On December 25, 2021, satellite imagery revealed that the island had increased in size by 300-600 meters on its eastern side. During 29-30 December 2021, Several surges of Sertsian activity occurred, some of which were witnessed by passengers on a small South Seas charters boat. Eruption plumes during the second half of December 2021 interrupted air travel to Tonga multiple times. January 2022 As activity on the island decreased, it was declared dormant by the Tonga Geological Services on January 11, 2022. A large eruption commenced on January 14, 2022 at 4.20 local time, sending clouds of ash 20 kilometers into the atmosphere. The government of Tonga issued a tsunami warning to residents, and waves of 30 centimeters were observed in Nukualafa. Later in the afternoon, Tongan geologists near the volcano observed explosions in a 5 km wide ash column between 1700 hours and 1830 local time. A much larger Plinian eruption started the following day at 1714 local time. The eruption column from this eruption rose 58 km into the mesosphere. The VAAC again issued an advisory notice to airlines. Ash from the eruption made landfall on the main island of Tongatapu, blotting out the sun. 
Loud explosions were heard 65 kilometers away in Nukwalifa, and small stones and ash rained down from the sky. Many residents in Tonga were stuck in traffic whilst attempting to flee to higher ground. The explosion was heard in Samoa, roughly 840 kilometers away before the sound traveled to more distant countries. Residents in Fiji, more than 700 kilometers away, described the sounds of thunder while the thump of the eruption was also reported in Niu and Vanuatu. Tremors and shaking buildings were reported by residents in southwestern Niu, around Alofi and Avitelli. The United States Geological Survey estimated the eruption at a surface wave magnitude of 5.8. The eruption was heard more than 2,000 kilometers away in New Zealand, where the sound arrived two hours later. A series of bangs were heard around 3.30 a.m. local time in and around Anchorage, Alaska, approximately 9,700 kilometers away from the volcano, lasting about 30 minutes. Low-frequency noise persisted for approximately two hours. Booms were heard as far away as Yukon in Canada. The volcanic explosion caused atmospheric shockwaves to propagate around the globe. Satellites visually captured shockwaves propagating across the Pacific Ocean in a very wide eruption column. The pressure wave was measured by weather stations in many locations, including New Zealand to a maximum amplitude of about 7 HPA, and Australia to 6.9 HPA at Lord Howe Island and 3.3 HPA at Perth. Even in Europe, a pressure fluctuation of 2.5 HPA was measured in Switzerland and of just over 2 HPA when it reached the United Kingdom. Shockwaves were reported as having gone around the Earth as many as four times in Japan and Utah, and at least twice at the Blue Hill Meteorological Observatory in Massachusetts. The pressure shockwave was also observed in China, India, which is 12,000 kilometers from the eruption site. Intense lightning activity was recorded during the eruption phase. The Visala Global Lightning Data Set GLD360 detected lightning in the form of radio waves. Several hundred to a thousand flashes of lightning were recorded by the system during the two weeks before the eruption. From 14 to January 15, 2022, tens of thousands of lightning flashes occurred. Between 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock UTC on January 15, 2022, 200,000 flashes were recorded. Preliminary observations showed that the eruption column ejected a large amount of volcanic material into the stratosphere, leading to speculation that it would cause a temporary climate cooling effect. Later calculations showed it injected an estimated 400,000 tons of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere and was unlikely to have any global cooling effect. Despite this, the eruption can have a cooling effect in the southern hemisphere, causing slight cooling of winters and spectacular sunsets. People living in the southern hemisphere can expect purple sunsets for a few months after the eruption. A cooling effect of 0.10.5 degrees C may last until spring 2022. The eruption was described as a once-in-a-thousand-year event for the Hunga Caldera. NASA satellite Aura detected the eruption using its microwave limb sounder. It measures ozone, water vapor, and other atmospheric gases, and can penetrate obstacles such as ash clouds. The undersea eruption also ejected 146 million tons of South Pacific Ocean water into the stratosphere. The amount of water vapor ejected was 10% of the stratosphere's typical stock. It was enough to temporarily warm the surface of Earth. It is estimated that an excess of water vapor should remain for 5-10 years. Academic Research According to a March 2022 paper in the journal Earthquake Research Advances, Hunga Tonga Hunga Hepes Plume reached a peak height of 58 km into the atmosphere and sustained heights greater than 30 km. The initial explosive event was possibly more powerful than the Hape eruption, even though Hape ejected over 10 times the volume of material in a longer eruption. Hunga Tonga Hunga Hepe erupted over a span of 12 hours, 
releasing 1.9 cubic kilometers of ejecta with an estimated mass of 2,900 teragram. The Arab paper says the eruption correlated to a VA of 5-6. An April 2022 research paper led by Polly and Shapiro and published by the American Geophysical Union indicates that the eruption is the largest ever observed with modern instrumentation and estimates its VA to be approximately 6. Meanwhile, Fergaz and others estimate the blast yield to be 100-200 megatons of TNT and place the corresponding VA at 5.8. Likewise, a study by Diaz and Rigby estimates the energetic output of the eruption to be equivalent to 61 megatons of TNT, making the event more powerful than the largest nuclear bomb ever detonated. The Smithsonian Institution Global Volcanism Program rated the eruption at V5. The Arab paper also concludes that this eruption resulted in the formation of a new caldera. In May 2022, Scientists at the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research released a bathymetry map indicating a large caldera measuring 4 km in width formed from the eruption. Surveys also indicated that the caldera floor is located 850 m below sea level. According to a volcanologist, the caldera walls continue to experience ongoing collapses. Surveys of the seafloor around the volcano found large sediment piles layers of fine mud and ash, and valleys up to 50 kilometers from the volcano. The survey indicated that an estimated 6-7 km3 of debris was added to a 22,000 square kilometers area seafloor. Scientists also suggest that the volcano may still be erupting underwater. A 2022 study in the journal Ocean Engineering by Hydarzadeh and others determined the size of the initial tsunami caused by the eruption. The study analyzed data from 22 tide gauges, 8 deep ocean assessment and reporting of tsunamis stations, 8 atmospheric pressure time series, spectral analysis, and computer simulation. It was concluded that the eruption displaced 6.60 times 109 cubic meters of seawater, 90 m in amplitude, with a length of 12 kilometers. Tsunami Tsunamis are most frequently caused by earthquakes, while those caused by volcanic eruptions are rare. Fewer than 100 volcanic tsunamis were recorded in the prior two centuries. According to an official at GNS Science, the suspected cause of the tsunami was an undersea eruption that destroyed part of the island on January 14. This allowed seawater to fill the volcanic vent causing another undersea explosion the next day. The explosion was so huge that it penetrated through the overlying seawater and triggered the tsunami. Tsunami forecast models and alert systems which were intended to work for earthquake-generated tsunamis failed to consider the effects of the shockwaves on the tsunami as it radiated outwards. Shockwaves from the eruption caused abnormally high waves along the coasts of Peru and Japan. The tsunami waves also struck the coasts earlier than had been forecasted. Oceania As a result of the eruption, a 1.2M tsunami struck the Tongan capital Nukwalifa. Tide gauges in the city recorded waves 1.52M in height. Videos posted on the internet showed a series of waves hitting the shore and homes, sweeping away debris. Other videos show ash fall and a cloud of ash obscuring the sun. According to a resident in the Tongan capital, a series of initial smaller explosions was heard. It was followed by a tsunami approximately 15 minutes later. The first wave was said to be the largest. A long white wave was observed out at sea approaching the coast. Three waves reportedly struck the coast. In the wake of the tsunami, King Topo 6 was evacuated from the royal palace and traffic jams formed as locals fled inland or to higher ground. Based on an unofficial first hand account of the tsunami in Tonga, the risk layer think tank developed a tsunami inundation map. From the map, a tsunami with a height of 15 m or greater may have struck the west coast of the island of Tonga Tapu, where heavy damage was observed. The Tongan government, on January 18, 2022, confirmed waves of up to 15 m struck the west coast of Tongatapu, 
Iyue and Heipei Islands. Tsunami surveys along the Tonga Islands confirmed that a tsunami of 20 m struck Namuka, 65 km northeast of the island. An 18 m wave struck Kanakupolu, on Tongatapu. Waves measuring 10 m were reported on islands greater than 85 km away. In Fiji, a tidal gauge in Suva recorded a wave measuring 20 cm at 1740 local time. Some tsunami activity was also reported in the Lao Islands. The islands of Mos, Moala, Kadavu, and Tevunai were struck by low-level tsunamis that triggered flooding. In American Samoa, a tsunami measuring 61 cm was recorded by tide gauges. Niu, where residents evacuated coastal areas, reported no tsunami, despite tremors, and the island's close proximity to Tonga. Tsunami waves of 1-2.5 m were observed in several islands in Vanuatu. The Vanuatu Meteorology and Geohazards Department said tsunami activity was expected to persist for the night of January 15, 2022. Waves up to 0.8 m in height were recorded in Hanalei. Hawaii. A combination of a cyclone surge from Cyclone Cody and the tsunami caused extensive damage at a marina in Tutukaka in New Zealand. The waves pulled boats away from their moorings, taking some out into the bay and smashing some together, as well as damaging the structures at the marina. About 8 to 10 boats were completely sunk, with the total damage amounting to $5.93 million. According to Oreki Gulf Weather, the tsunami struck on January 16, 2022 at between 1.05 and 1.10 local time on Great Barrier Island with a height of 1.33 m. The tsunami caused flooding at Mahinipua Bay, where a campsite was located, all 50 individuals at the site were safe. A group of people fishing in Hokianga Harbor had to run for their lives to escape the waves, and reported having to drive through water over 1 m deep. Unusual waves were recorded in Port Taranaki in New Plymouth. They lasted 24 hours, with the largest having a peak-to-peak -peak height of 1 m at 8.30 local time. There were no casualties reported in New Zealand. In Australia, the Bureau of Meteorology said tsunami waves were observed throughout Saturday night on the shores along the east coast of Australia. Maximum tsunami waves of 1.27 m were recorded at Norfolk Island, 1.10 m at Lord Howe Island, 0.82 m at the Gold Coast, Queensland, 0.77 m at Twofold Bay, New South Wales, and 0.50 m at Hobart, Tasmania. Asia In Kominato, Amami, Kagoshima, Japan a 1.2 m tsunami was reported at 23:55 on January 15 JST. At Tosashimizu, Chi, the tsunami was 0.9 m in height. A tsunami measuring 0.9 m was also reported in Shishijima Futami. On the Tohoku coast, a 0.7 m wave struck at 12:38 local time on January 16, 2022. In the Sendai port, the tsunami measured 0.9 m at 12.08. In Iwate Prefecture, a 1.1 m tsunami was recorded at 2.26 on January 16. The tallest tsunami was recorded 1.34 m at Amamishima, Okinawa. Tsunami waves of less than a meter were reported along the Hokkaido Pacific coast. This was the nation's first tsunami warning since the 2016 Fukushima earthquake. The JMA said that the tsunami struck 2.5 hours earlier than predicted. Small tsunami waves were observed on the coast of Taiwan. The heights of the tsunami were 0.4 m at Haobi Lake in Pingduong County, followed by 0.38 m. On Orchid Island, Taitung County, 0.36 m in Yulan County, 0.31 m in Sueo, and 0.29 m at Hualien County. Waves were also observed at Chenggong with a height of 0.25 m, and at Kaohsiung for 0.24 m. In Jeju Island, South Korea, 
there were fluctuations of up to 1520 cm in the sea level. Russia's Kuril Islands, in the country's far east, had tsunami waves of about 20 cm. At least two ports were warned. North America The highest tsunami waves in the United States were 1.3 m in Port San Luis and San Luis Obispo County and 1.1 m in both Arena Cove and Crescent City. Significant waves hit the Santa Cruz Harbor, and its parking lot was flooded with about 0.91 m of water, while Soquel Creek in the neighboring city of Capitola flowed backwards. A surfing competition was cancelled. Strong currents in Half Moon Bay were reported, while small waves were observed at Seal Beach. Waves up to 0.37 m in height were recorded in Nikolski, Alaska. There was an unusually high tide along the coasts of British Columbia and Vancouver Island. At 11.55 a.m. local time, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center said tide levels rose 29 centimeters in Winter Harbor. Large logs were pushed up by the high tides and deposited on the beaches. The tsunami was first detected along the coastline of Mexico on January 15 at 12.35 by tide gauges at Michoacan. At the coasts of Guerrero, Oaxaca, and Baja California Peninsula, sea level rise was reported with waves of 30 cm to 61 cm. A tide level of 2.05 m was measured at Manzanillo, Colima according to the Mariographic Service of the Institute of Geophysics of the National Autonomous University of Mexico. The tsunami had an amplitude of 1.19 m in Zihuatanjo. Waves of just under 1 m were recorded in Acapulco, Huatulco, and Salina Cruz. Tsunami activity along the Pacific coast persisted until January 20. The tsunami measured taller than 2 m at Ensenada. Baja California. Sea level disturbances were recorded at the coast of the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean Sea. The shockwave triggered Mateo tsunami had a maximum wave height of 0.377 m. Minor tsunamis were measured as far away as the Caribbean Sea and Texas, with National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration reporting a maximum rise of 12 cm at the Isla de Mona in Puerto Rico at 1611 UTC. These may have been Mateo tsunamis related to slight atmospheric pressure changes. South America In Peru, two people were killed in Lambayaki, where the tsunami measured 2 m. Waves measuring 0.68 m were recorded in the port of Callao, 0.72 m in Marcana district and 0.65 m in Peta. Significant sea level disturbances were measured off the coast of Ecuador's La Libertad, Esmeraldas, and Manta. At 2.33 am local time, a 50 cm rise in sea level was measured on the mainland. There were also sea level changes in the Galapagos Islands. Sea level disturbances off the nation's coast persisted for nearly an hour. In northern Chile, waves of up to 2 m struck the coastline. Videos and images on social media from the Los Rios region showed the tsunami damaging piers, carrying boats, and hitting beaches. A tsunami of 1.74 m was measured at Chanaral. Response January 14 a tsunami warning was issued on January 14 in Tonga after an eruption was observed. Volcanic activity decreased following that eruption and the warning was lifted in the early morning of January 15. A 30 cm wave was observed during the first tsunami warning. January 15 Another warning was issued to the whole of Tonga on the evening of January 15 following the next eruption. Warning sirens blared in Nukwalafa while authorities urged residents to flee to higher ground. The Mineral Resources Department in Fiji issued advisories to people living around the coastal areas to stay away from the shores. Evacuations were made on the Lao Islands after wave activity was observed in the sea. Fiji's Attorney General Ayas Said Kayam urged the public to stay indoors and cover household water tanks in the event of rain due to the risk of fallout of sulfuric acid from the SO2 emitted in the air by the eruption. In Wallace and Futuna, a tsunami warning was issued, 
but no damage was reported and the alert was lifted in the evening of 15 January. Tsunami warnings were also issued to American Samoa by the PTWC. The PTWC considered the tsunami hazardous and warned that changes in sea level, as well as strong currents, could pose a risk along the coast. Samoa later issued a tsunami advisory. The PTWC later cancelled the tsunami warning for American Samoa. The National Emergency Management Agency of New Zealand told residents to expect strong and unusual currents and unpredictable surges along the north and east coast of North Island, as well as the Chatham Islands. The agency added that the currents have the potential to injure and drown people. A tsunami warning was issued by the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia with a land warning issued for Norfolk Island and Lord Howe Island, and a marine warning for the east coast of Australia, Tasmania, and Macquarie Island. On January 16, at 6.55 AEDT, tsunami marine warnings were issued to New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, and Tasmania for strong and dangerous currents. The Japan Meteorological Agency informed residents that a slight disturbance in the sea could occur without any damage. The tsunami would not pose a threat to the Japanese coastline. Officials from the JMA said that sea level rise of no more than 20 cm could be expected for 24 hours from 9 p.m. Japan Standard Time. A tsunami warning was issued in the Amami Islands and Tokara Islands by the JMA with forecasted waves of up to 3 m. Additional warnings were issued to the east and southeast coast for waves of up to 1 m. A warning and evacuation order was issued to Iwate Prefecture, and evacuation orders were also issued to six other prefectures. The Fire and Disaster Management Agency said that 229,000 residents living in the eight prefectures were evacuated. Japan downgraded its warnings the following morning. Russia issued a tsunami advisory for the Kuril Islands. The National Tsunami Warning Center issued a tsunami advisory along the west coast of the United States and British Columbia, Canada. The advisory contained all U.S. areas along the west coast from Southern California to Alaska. Beaches were closed, and coastal residents were requested to move to higher ground. A surfing contest with over 100 participants was cancelled in Santa Cruz, California. Tsunami waves measuring 3061 cm were expected to hit the shores as early as 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time along the central coast. San Francisco was expected to receive waves at 8.10. The highest tsunami waves are expected one to two hours after the arrival of the first waves. A tsunami advisory was put in place for the entirety of Hawaii. Advisories in Canada were issued along the north and central coasts of British Columbia, along with the Haida Gwaii Archipelago and Vancouver Island. No evacuation order was issued, but people were urged to avoid beaches and marinas. The warning level was low due to the height of reported waves, as they were below the 91 cm threshold which would warrant an upgrade. By 12.35 local time, the tsunami advisory for British Columbia would be cancelled. By the evening, the United States lifted advisories for Alaska, Hawaii, Washington, Oregon, and portions of California. They remained in effect in California in parts of the central and north coast until early the following day. No warnings were issued to Peru initially. After the tsunami struck, Authorities stopped all maritime activities at the coast. Twenty-two ports along north and central Peru were closed due to tsunami activity. Chile also issued a warning for a minor tsunami for most of its coastal area, including the island of Rapa Nui. Evacuation was declared for 12 other regions. The Hydrographic and Oceanographic Service of the Chilean Navy declared a state of precaution and indicated that there is a possibility of a minor tsunami in the affected regions. Later, coastal evacuation notices were issued in 14 of the 16 regions in Chile. A red alert level was issued to more than 6,400 kilometers of its coastline. The Chilean National Office for Emergency said that tsunami activity could persist overnight 
so those impacted would need to hold on to their emergency supplies and aid. Ecuador issued a warning of maritime disturbance for the Galapagos Islands. Mexico issued tsunami warnings for the coasts of states of Baja California, Jalisco, Colima, Michoacan, Guerrero, Oaxaca, and Chiapas, urging people to avoid the coasts and entering the sea. Subsequent days a tsunami advisory was issued to American Samoa following a new eruption at the volcano on January 16. The advisory was cancelled almost two hours later. A tsunami alert that was issued to Fiji on January 15 was cancelled. On January 17, the Department of Environment in Fiji confirmed that the sulfur dioxide concentration in the atmosphere increased overnight. As previously advised, the department urged the public to cover all household water tanks and stay indoors in the event of acid rain. The Ministry of Environment also advised the public not to consume rainwater. The first aid planes from New Zealand and Australia arrived on Tonga on January 20, as phone lines were partially restored. On February 2, after receiving aid shipments, the country went into a COVID 19 lockdown as two port workers in Nukwalifa tested positive. Impact Tonga Little information was made available on the extent of damage and casualties from Tonga due to communication issues involving a damaged undersea cable. Video footage showing waves hitting coastal areas in Tonga was reported by Sky News. Added, a small island off the capital city, was reportedly submerged and rescue operations were being carried out. Images confirmed that most of the island have been wiped out, the New Zealand Defence Force described the damages as catastrophic. There were some reports of residents in Tonga struggling to breathe as a result of the ash. According to a media release by the government via a tweet, all structures were destroyed on Mango Island. Only two buildings remained intact on Fonoithwa Island and Namuka Island suffered major damage. 21 homes were destroyed and another 35 were seriously damaged on Tong Gatapu's west coast. Eight homes were demolished and 20 seriously damaged in Nukwalifa. EUA Island saw the loss of two homes and 45 damaged. An assessment by the United Nations Institute for Training and Research revealed extensive damage on Adit Island, at least 72 buildings were affected by the tsunami and the whole island was blanketed by ash. Early reports said Adit Island, which is located off the main Tongan island near Nukwalifa, was submerged by the tsunami. A Facebook post by the Royal Sunset Island Resort on the island said all residents were accounted for and safely evacuated. On Tongatapu, 50 homes were destroyed and 100 more suffered damage. A New Zealand government official in the capital Nukwalifa said extensive damage occurred on the waterfront of the city, as it was severely hit by the tsunami. Acting High Commissioner Peter Lund said that several people were unaccounted for following the eruption and tsunami. Tattoo parlor owner Angela Glover, a British resident in Tonga, was among the people missing, swept away by the tsunami when it hit Nukwalifa. Glover's body was later found. Though the extent of the damage in Tonga is still not clear, a blanket of thick ash has contaminated water supplies, cut off communications and prevented surveillance flights, making it difficult for relief efforts to begin. Another fatality was confirmed by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade on January 18. Lund added that there was an initially unconfirmed third death from the tsunami. This third death was identified as a local resident, and the Tongan government has confirmed three deaths were the result of the tsunami. The government of Tonga said that the two locals who died were from Mango and Namuka Islands respectively. A fourth fatality was confirmed by January 30, but information about this victim was not disclosed. On January 23, the Tongan government confirmed that eight people on Namuka Island were injured with six others sustaining minor injuries. Photos shared by a resident on the island of Lifuka, northeast of Nukwalifa showed minor damage to island communities and a wharf. Damage suggests the island was hit by smaller waves. The islands of Oiha and Hano also sustained limited damage from the tsunami.
several photographs showed debris left by the tsunami strewn across a road and on grass fields. Owners of the Atafa Beach Resort wrote on Facebook that their beach resort, located at the northern tip of the island of Tongatapu, was completely destroyed. The employees were able to escape. They added that the whole western coastline of the island and Kanaku Polo village were destroyed. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs stated that there was concern for two low-lying islands in the Heipei Group, Phonoi and Mango, as a distress beacon had been detected on one of the islands. A surveillance flight confirmed substantial property damage on the two low-lying islands, the Tongan government later confirmed that all homes on Mango Island were destroyed. Southern Cross Cable reported that the eruption may have broken the Tonga cable system, which connects Tonga to Southern Cross's Trans Pacific Cable in Fiji. Southern Cross cited a fault in the International Cable 37 km from Nukwalifa, and a further fault in a domestic cable 47 km from Nukwalifa. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern had earlier stated that an undersea cable serving Tonga was affected, probably due to power cuts, and authorities were urgently attempting to restore communications. The chair of the Tonga cable system, Samuela Fanua, stated that repair crews would not be cleared to access the site of the faults before volcanic activity ceased at Hunga Tonga, with additional preparation time necessary for the repairs. Internet services could be unavailable for over two weeks after the eruption. Limited satellite connectivity was established on January 21. Mobile phone provider Digicel established a 2G cell network on Tongatapu using a satellite dish from the University of the South Pacific. Reuters reported that a specialist cable repair ship would arrive at the Tongan archipelago on January 30. On February 4, the Associated Press reported that Fanua stated that repair crews would need to replace 87 kilometers of cable, and that he hoped to have it restored the following week. On February 8, the Matanji Tonga website reported that more breaks were suspected within the cable, delaying the cable's restoration to February 20. Agents France Press followed up in a report on February 15 stating that the cable was torn into multiple pieces and that a 55-kilometer section of cable had been lost. The report also stated that separate sections of cable had been moved 5 kilometers and buried under 30 centimeters of silt. The cable being cut repeatedly and moved long distances is consistent with a turbidity current damaging it, similar to the 1929 Grand Banks earthquake. The cable connection to Tongatapu was repaired on 22 February. Severe damage on the west coast of Tongatapu was confirmed by the New Zealand High Commission in Tonga on January 17. Surveillance flights by the Australian Defence Forces reported extensive damage along the west coast. The shores of Nukwalifa had substantial damage as debris and rocks were deposited inland by the tsunami waves according to an early report from the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. A two-centimeter layer of volcanic ash blanketed the capital Nukwalifa. Satellite images of Namuka Island showed that nearly a fifth of the structures had been damaged, with more than 40 buildings covered in ash. The Fuyamoto International Airport was covered with ash and dirt. There were also reports of water damage in the district of Nukwalifa. The Tongan Navy that was dispatched to Heipei Islands reported significant damage, where a tsunami estimated to be between 510 m in height traveled as far as 500 m inland. The World Bank's damage assessment report for the Tongan government stated that the eruption and tsunami caused damage estimated at US$90.4 million, 18.5% of Tonga's total gross domestic product. The Global Facility for Disaster Reduction and Recovery reported that 600 buildings including 300 homes were damaged or destroyed by the tsunami. The damage was estimated at US$43.7 million. At least 85% of Tonga's agricultural industry was severely affected by damage to crops and fisheries, estimating at US$20.9 million. Damage to roads, bridges, 
ports and submarine cables were an estimated US$20.9 million. The cleanup cost is also an additional US$5 million. Elsewhere In Fiji, the eruption triggered waves in Vanua Balavu, Kadavu, Gao, and Tevunai. In the village of Mos, Lao Islands, the tsunami severely damaged some homes on the beaches and debris was strewn across the village and boats were dragged inland. There was sizable damage to schools, infrastructure as well as fishing boats in the islands. Point two people in Itaman, Okinawa, and Amami City, Japan suffered falls during the evacuations. A number of fishing boats in Kshi and Mi prefectures capsized or sank. A total of 30 fishing vessels were lost. In Muroto, five small boats sank and another five were lost. A small ship capsized and sank in Oas. The tsunami also damaged fishing nets on the coast of Takushima Prefecture. Land, sea, and air transportation was affected. 27 domestic flights operated by Japan Airlines were cancelled due to the warnings. The tsunami caused serious material damage to a tour operator at Kailuakona, Hawaii where 80% of its inventory and gear was lost. Major damage to retail products and the business office totaled at least $75,000. Beaches and piers were flooded by the surging waves in the city. Canoes belonging to several clubs were damaged and strewn across the beach or on rock walls due to the waves. Boats were dumped inland or on piers after the waves retreated. Point two women in northern Peru drowned in the swell when two M waves hit Nalamp Beach, Lambaya Key, dragging a truck into the sea. The driver escaped. Twenty-two ports along northern and central Peru were closed due to the tsunami. Substantial material damage was inflicted on coastal businesses and the beach areas. Videos showed the tsunami flooding the streets. Restaurants and boats in Lagunillas Beach and San Andres District were damaged by waves. Many beachgoers were evacuated to safety while businesses closed. Damage to piers and some homes occurred in the capital, Lima. In some areas, boat owners dragged their boats onto shore to prevent the waves from damaging them. The Peruvian Civil Defense Institute said on January 17 that an oil spill occurred at the La Pampula refinery. The spill was caused by tsunami waves moving a ship while transporting oil onto the refinery. The oil spill affected some 1,187 square kilometers of sea and 1,740 square kilometers of beach coastal strip, and more than 500 ha of protected natural areas in Peru. Despite the warnings from officials, some residents in California strayed too close to the sea, and they were swept away by strong surges such as the situation at San Gregorio, California, where four fishermen were swept out to sea by the tsunami. Two men were injured and received medical treatment, while another two were rescued unhurt. A woman was rescued and treated by medical workers at China Beach, San Francisco. San Francisco firefighters and the U.S. Coast Guard rescued three surfers. The tsunami caused extensive damage at Santa Cruz Harbor in Santa Cruz, California. Electrical systems, pilings, restrooms, and showers were damaged and repair costs were estimated at $6 US dollars and 50 cents million. Minor material damage occurred on the coast of Penco, and six people were trapped in Coliamo, in Chile's Biobio Bio region. No casualties were reported due to the evacuations. A state of precaution was still in place in Atacama, Coquimba, Nubal and Biobio Bio as of January 16, 2022. Flights to Tonga and in the surrounding region were disrupted by lingering volcanic ash. Air New Zealand stated that a repatriation flight to Tonga that was originally scheduled for January 20 was postponed indefinitely and Fiji Airways announced that all flights to Tonga were postponed and several services to Australia could face delays and longer flight times. An Aircolin flight from Tokyo to Noumea was diverted to Brisbane to avoid volcanic ash, with a subsequent flight from Noumea to Sydney placed on hold. The ash cloud reached Queensland on January 17, 
creating an eerie, spectacular, and incredible sunrise. In July, it reached Antarctica, causing stunning pink and purple skyscapes. Assistance New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said officials from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs were discussing the provision of aid to Tonga. Ardern described the events in Tonga as hugely concerning. On January 16, she announced New Zealand was donating NZ$500,000, which was very much the starting point. The Royal New Zealand Navy was preparing to sail and Arun's of P-3 Orion would be sent on a reconnaissance flight as soon as it was safe to do so. The ash cloud was estimated at 19,000 m high, well above the Orion's service ceiling. The C-130H Hercules airlift is ready to serve as well. Following reports of no continued ash fall in Tonga, the P-3 Orion left Renzif Base Auckland for Tonga on the morning of January 17. On January 18, as an Renzif Lockheed C-130 Hercules was unable to land following continued ash fall in Tonga, two Royal New Zealand Navy ships set sail for Tonga. HMNZS Wellington carried survey equipment and a helicopter, while HMNZS Aotearoa carried 250,000 L of water and desalination equipment to produce a further 70,000 L per day. On January 20, New Zealand announced that it would dispatch a third warship, HMNZS Canterbury with two NH-90 helicopters to assist with relief efforts. Tonga accepted an offer by the Australian government of a surveillance flight to assess the damage. Two Boeing P-8A Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft and a Lockheed C-130J Hercules of the Royal Australian Air Force departed on the morning of January 17, 2022 for Tonga to survey damage to roadways, ports and power lines. The Australian and New Zealand governments also announced they were coordinating their humanitarian response with France and the United States. Assistance from France is provided through the humanitarian aid mechanism of the France Agreement with Australia and New Zealand. Australia would later announce that HMAS Adelaide would be deployed to Tonga with water purification and humanitarian supplies. The United States dispatched USS Sampson as well as a Coast Guard vessel while the United Kingdom deployed HMS Spey. After 23 crew members of the Adelaide tested positive for COVID-19 while en route to Tonga, the ship made a contactless delivery. On January 17, officials in Tonga called for immediate aid. Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Tonga Fatafi Fakafanua in a social media post wrote that Tonga needs immediate assistance to provide its citizens with fresh drinking water and food. The International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement and the Pacific Island Forum has offered its assistance. Tear Fund and Oxfam provided immediate assistance by supporting people with food and water. Oxfam already had filtering units in Tongatapu which could turn salt water into drinking water. UNICEF will work with the Tongan government to reach affected children and families. The agency was also ready to transport its emergency supplies from Fiji and Brisbane. Fiji's Attorney General and Acting Prime Minister Ayaz Said Kayyum said that Fiji was working with New Zealand and Australia to coordinate regional relief efforts. He added that Fiji had offered to dispatch Republic of Fiji military forces personnel and engineers that would join the Australian Defence Force. Relief supplies would also be sent to the Lao group that was affected by the tsunami. On January 29, a chartered commercial vessel was deployed to Tonga. Aboard the vessel were 11 shipping containers filled with relief supplies. Four containers were from the Tongan community in Fiji while the rest were from donations by government and non-government organizations. The International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies Asia Pacific said that drinking water were hurriedly distributed to people in need due to the tsunami and ash affecting local water supply. The Tonga Red Cross provided temporary shelters and supplied water to affected communities. Emergency response teams were sent to Mango, Fonoifwa, and the Mukha Islands. International China, on January 17, 
the Red Cross Society of China decided to provide 100,000 US dollars of emergency humanitarian aid in cash to the Tongan side, while the government of China said it would deliver a batch of disaster relief materials to Tonga at the request of the South Pacific Island country. On January 19, the Chinese government delivered a batch of emergency supplies such as drinking water and food to Tonga through the embassy in Tonga. The Chinese embassy in Fiji raised another batch of RMB 1 million materials to deliver to Tonga. On 27 and January 31, the Chinese army dispatched Air Force Transport Aircraft Y-20 and naval ships to Tonga to deliver emergency and post-disaster reconstruction materials such as water purifiers, tents, personal protective equipment, generators, water pumps, tractors, radio communication equipment in two batches. The two batches of materials are 33 tons and more than 1,400 tons respectively. They arrived on January 28 and February 15 local time respectively. Israel, Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid stated that Israel was exploring ways of providing aid to Tonga through its aid agency Mashav including access to safe drinking water. Singapore, on January 18, the Singapore Red Cross Society pledged S$50,000 in aid to Tonga and also announced a fundraising effort to raise more help for those affected by the tsunami. Japan, on January 20, the Japanese government dispatched two C-130H via Australia to Tonga. Subsequently, the Japanese Ministry of Defense decided to send JS Osumi with 60,000 liters of drinking water high-pressure cleaning devices for removing volcanic ash, and two CH-47J on board. The ministry had also deployed its C-2 transport aircraft loaded with additional relief supplies. The Japanese government has also planned to offer more than 114 million yen in funds for Tonga. India, on January 25th the Indian government provided an immediate relief assistance of 200,000 US dollars to support relief, rehabilitation and reconstruction efforts in Tonga, which it described as a close friend and partner under the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation. Non-State Actors On February 6, the New Zealand Herald and the Fiji Broadcasting Corporation's FBC News reported that SpaceX engineers were working to restore Internet access in Tonga. New Zealand National Party Member of Parliament Shane Reedy had earlier petitioned SpaceX CEO Elon Musk for assistance in providing Starlink satellite technology to the island country. In response, Musk had asked on Twitter whether Tonga authorities could inform him on whether Starlink terminals were needed. The Fijian Minister for Communications Ayas Said Kayam subsequently confirmed that SpaceX engineers would establish and operate a temporary ground station in Fiji to assist with efforts to restore Internet access in Tonga. By February 23, Tonga Cable had managed to restore Tonga's fiber optic cable with the assistance of SpaceX. The subcom ship Reliance is working to restore the Southern Cross Cable connection with repairs due to be completed on March 1, 2022. On February 21, repair works on the Southern Cross Cable were completed, restoring Internet to Tonga. Tongan Olympian flag bearer Pita Tofatofwa, who became widely known during the 2016 Summer Olympics, gathered more than $330,000 US dollar in aid to his native country, after he opened a GoFundMe fundraising website.